NFTs. No, Motion Array is not becoming an NFT or crypto channel, but man, the NFT space is blowing up right now. Now, while we're not experts on that topic, we are experts on how to make your videos look even more awesome. So today I'm gonna to be showing you our digital collector's display for Premiere Pro and After Effects, which basically helps you take your digital artwork from this to this. So here's what this basically is. It's a nice outer digital shell for you to hold and present your digital artwork with, or NFTs or whatever you want, and make them look just that much more presentable. Now, this concept of having a display case for your artwork isn't exactly new. It's not something I've seen too much in the digital world. And this particular style you may recognize as being a little bit reminiscent of the display case used by artists like Beeple. But because we usually present our digital artwork digitally, we wanted to provide something that really helps it to stand out. And so I've linked to all three variations that we have here in the description below. Feel free to check it out. In our last video, we talked about how to make your digital videos look and feel more tangible. And this is exactly what the digital display case does. It reflects your image with surface imperfections and refractions to make it feel like it's really spinning around in the 3D world. So let's pop open Premiere Pro and After Effects and I'll show you exactly how to use them and then some little hints to help you get the most out of them. So right here off the bat, you can either download it as an After Effects file or as a motion graphics template for Premiere Pro. The major difference between these is that with the After Effects file, you're gonna be able to dive in to literally every pixel and adjust every little nuance that you could ever imagine. While the Premiere Pro version is gonna be more like it's on rails and easier to use without messing up, like drag and drop sort of easy. But I'm getting ahead of myself, let's start off with the motion graphics template inside of Premiere Pro. With our new or existing project in Premiere Pro, go up to Essential Graphics and go to this little icon down in the corner here. Click it and you can find your motion graphics template where you saved it on your computer, and when you select it, you'll now see that it's available in your Essential Graphics panel. Do this for all of the options available, and now you have all the variations to be able to start editing with. From here, you can just click and drag these into your sequence and start using them. Boom, there it is. And its default animation is gonna look something like this. But right off the bat, you'll probably wanna know just how to insert your own image instead of the default one. Super easy, just go down here to replace media. And you can take any image you want and drag and drop it to replace it. Boom, image replaced, just that easy. By default, it'll zoom in and fill the slightly portrait style, but you can also scale to fit to maintain the aspect ratio of that original image. Now with the basics in place, you can start to make some larger changes and really start to build out the look of your case. First, you can choose between layout A and layout B. The biggest difference is the thick outer border here for A, and for B, it's a lot more reminiscent of a Beeple-like display case. Regardless of which one you choose, you can tune the colors here, but I like sticking with a nice simple black and white design. Stay neutral and let the image stand out for itself. Now here you can choose the animation it goes through. By default, it's quick flip rotation, but you've got five different pre-built animations to choose from, like number two, the twist. I like this one because it's super simple and doesn't go crazy, but it also gives some nice subtle 3D movement to an otherwise 2D image. Plus, it shows off some really cool details of the display, like how it actually refracts the light going through the sides here so that you get the reflection of the image that you've actually chosen. It's pretty cool. Then there's slow flip, rise, and revolve. But how is revolve different from the other flip motions? It kind of looks the same. Well, if you string these together back to back to back just by copying and pasting, it makes a seamless loop of never ending, never changing rotations. Super helpful if all you want it to do is just export and loop on rotation forever. Okay, so now let's move on to editing the environment. Default is this gradient background that you can control the colors of here but you also have options to have 3D backgrounds like Rocky, Room, Cosmic, and you can change the hue here by rotating this dial and adjusting the lightness and saturation with these sliders. And finally, you've also got a transparent alpha background so that you can take this and place it over top of any other background you want. But it's not just for backgrounds. The alpha background selection is really useful and something that I would use it for personally is to composite this image into a real life shot. Stuff like making it look as if it's really floating on my desk. And it's not even that difficult to do. Just duplicate the display case, add a vertical flip from your effects panel, and then lower it down so it looks like it's actually reflecting off of the surface. Add a slight Gaussian blur and drop the opacity. And that's not looking too bad. Last but not least, let's make our text look super awesome. Each of these lines of text is controlled by a box here in the section for its layout. So if you had layout A chosen, 
you'd edit within this section for layout A. And same thing if you had layout B, just go down here to the layout B section. And editing this is literally as easy as editing a text document. Adjust the font, style, size, location, position, and what you're left with is a fancy looking display to highlight an awesome piece of art, an NFT, a product, or whatever you want. But that's just how to use it in Premiere Pro. In After Effects, you actually have even more options to leverage. In a similar fashion to Premiere Pro, to insert your own artwork, just go up here to this dropdown and then drag and drop your artwork into this composition here. And in order to edit it, under this control section here, you can have access to pretty much all the same controls you would have within Premiere Pro. But here's maybe the biggest difference that After Effects provides. You can add anything here, even if it's a video file. So if you have something with an infinitely looping video, you can add it here and it'll be reflected in your digital display. Pretty stellar, right? And the last thing that this After Effects version has specifically is once you've made all your changes, it has a pre-built sequence that goes throughout an entire showcasing of your display. A nice little presentation to help it look even more amazing. But if you consider yourself an After Effects aficionado, you can just keep diving into each of these compositions and drill down to the very base of each individual parameter. You could really play around with this and really make it your own. Go in and hack away at it if that's what makes you happy. But guys, that's just been a general overview of the template that I'm gonna be spending a lot of my own personal time playing around with. Again, I'm gonna leave a link for these in the description down below. So play around with them, try them out, and let me know how you enjoy using them. See what kind of unique variations and situations you can use these for. It's just one more thing that we wanted to add to your Motion Ray subscription to make it even more valuable. But guys, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.